Hi everybody, Jo here again. Thanks so much for popping in. As always, lovely to spend time with you. I do look forward to it. So I hope you're sitting comfortably. Plump those cushions up. You want to be comfortable, don't you? Anyway, today's card design. Now this could be a scrapbook page. It could be a journal page. We're going to combine quite a few techniques. Sometimes when we do a video on one specific technique, I like to do that just to um, remind you or show you a technique. Um, but sometimes it's nice to combine them as we would when we're actually making a card at home. So we're going to use a few different techniques today and just sort of combining them, as I say, to make a card. Now, I've got a rather large card blank here. But again, I do think this is one that you could either you, you panel. And again, I know we've done panel cards quite a few times before. Um, but again, they can vary. You can obviously vary the, the width of your panel. You can have two or three panels. You can have them horizontal or vertical. You can have them full colour. Today, I thought as well as the panel, we'd also do some spotlighting. And this area here is monochromatic. So if you're new to card making, you've got so many little parts here you can use. You can use the, the panel design, like I say. You could just use this little bit and do a monochromatic design. And this is using just grey, grey and white. Or you can take the idea of the spotlight, where not only have we highlighted an area, it's the only area that we've got colour. And I love that. And we've made it look as though we've decoupaged this. When I first heard of spotlighting, the idea was that you die cut the circle and decoupage it on top. But I like to actually make it flat. So this is completely flat look. But I like that illusion that we've actually 3D'd it. Now, I've left this area here, nice, white, clean space. But you could always add a little bit of stamping here if you wish. So, like I say, lots of ideas. And again, we've got a lovely envelope look. Lots of ideas here for you to take little bits and, um, you know, use them as you wish. Now, the first thing we're going to do to start this lovely design is I've got myself some of the Lavinia Multifarious card here and this is an A5 piece I'm going to be working on but as I say you, you could use this on larger smaller I like to vary the size of the the pieces that we create because I know you know we've got such a wealth of crafters on here and we all like different things now I'm going to come in with my Lavinia and as you know I write it in the middle my Lavinia low tack tape and I'm going to use my mat to give me an idea and I think we'll go for this one a little bit higher again I, I'm such a tinker I find it hard to make the same thing twice and let's have the panel so hopefully I'm using the grid on my Lavinia mat so hopefully they'll be she says <laughs> you never know not in my world they should be quite straight that's the idea anyway and what we're going to do first I'm just going to get myself a piece of kitchen roll to lean on I'm going to come in and the colour of ink I'm using today the elements I'm going for the graphite and then when it comes to use the VersaFine Claire for the stamping, I'm putting it with the morning mist. And I like to do this, choose a VersaFine Claire and an element that sort of go together. So I'm going to come in with the smallest, that's the number three stencil brush. And I'm just going to in the lid. And I just want to bring in a little bit of ink in the corner look and then gradually come across. And again, it's always important to put it in the lid, especially if it's a new ink pad, because it'll be um, quite strong if you take it straight from the ink pad. And I've done it a few times. If I've been in a rush, I've forgotten to put it on the lid first and it can be too strong, especially as I say, if it's a new juicy ink pad. So I'm just going to go a little bit up the sides, look. And then I'm just going to turn my work round because I find it easier to work this way. So again, in the lid and then in the corner, a little bit up the side. 
and then we'll drag some along same again and it's just to define the edge and although it looks like you've got nothing there if you peel back your tape look you can see that you have so I want a little bit more And again, you can, once you've taken that ink off your brush, it's quite nice to sort of blend that area. You get used to these brushes and knowing exactly how much. Now, I just want to add a little bit more just on this bottom edge, almost to ground the design. A bit more shadowing. Right. I'm going to stop there. I'm just going to get my copy of paper. As you know, I'm going to do the stamping next, so I just like to use my copy of paper. Now, I've got a variety of stamps out here, and I'm going to start with the lovely group poppies. And as I say, I'm going to use the morning mist. And because I want my poppies really to be in my spotlight, or well, one thing you must check is with which, whatever size of your acetate circle mass you're using do check it will fit whoa i was lucky there wasn't i in i like it inside if you want to have it popping out you need to think of that before you put this edge on that's just something to bear in mind so i'm going to have mine about here so i know that i want to have these lovely poppies inside now remember with our lovely florals you can alter the the stems on them look when you put them on your block and that's nice I always think they look a bit more natural so I think we'll have a lovely group of three if I just alter the height there there we go that's a nice little group and it doesn't matter if they're not completely and we can have one half on and half off now I just want with this stamp you get the lovely little seed heads and I like these. So we'll have a couple of these. Let's think one there. And obviously the reason I've got my kitchen roll here as well is because I'm liable to forget and go on the card. Don't know about you, but I get carried away. I start talking and playing and before I know it, I've stamped on this lovely bit that should be white space. Now, I just want to add, I've got this lovely stamp, which is called Lily. And it's beautiful, this one. If you've not seen this one, it's fabulous for colouring in. Um, and I just want to have one of these. This is sort of, in my mind, it's a meadow. And often you get almost that random, that rogue flower or weed that pops up. So we'll just have this here. Just one of these. I mean, after all, what is it they say, a weed? It's just a, a flower in the wrong place. And then I'm going to come in with the wild summer flowers. And we'll have a few of these just sort of dotted about. I don't want to overdo it. I'm just going to move this round. Maybe just a little bit of the page there and you know what I think I might just have one just catch in there and then because I've got different types of flowers here that's fine but I do want a little bit of continuity so to bring the continuity of the design I'm bringing in the orchard grass now the orchard grass and the field grass are fabulous for this because again a meadow it wouldn't necessarily be exactly the same flowers all the way along you do get different ones, don't you? I mean, you know, there's lots of different meadow flowers. I was going to start listing them and then I thought, no, because if I start listing them, I'm bound to miss one or two off and, and, and you'll all be shouting at me saying, what about this? But like I say, for me, once you bring in this orchard grass and stamp it right across, first and second generation, and obviously remember... Once you clean it, look, you can just stamp the little tip, take it off 
and then we can just add that there so it looks like it's in the distance so we're like, and it doesn't it won't we've lost the stem which is nice because we've not gone over and it saves having to mask that um that lovely poppy now can you see for me the way that that now looks like a continuous design even though we've got different flowers and that's just by using that orchard grass now what we'll do we'll just block that because it's so important to make sure you always blot last thing we want to do is smudge it and there's nothing worse than it. you can guarantee it'll be a piece that you really like when you smudge it so what we can do now is add our circle mask which i nearly lost then so oh they just fit in look now it wouldn't matter on the original i've got one half in and half off and that does look quite nice but i like the fact they actually all fit in but i've gone off here so I'll move it up make sure it's all in there yeah, I think we'll go with that. Now I'll come in with the graphite again, again in the lid. And we're just going to create this lovely circle. Now I always start at the bottom because I want the bottom darker. So if I always start at the bottom and then move my way around to the top, the bottom will eventually be darker which is what we want, just to give that idea, that illusion. It'll just start to build up that illusion that it's decoupaged. And again, once there's less ink on my brush, I can fill in this space here. And again, take your time, build up the design. You'll get a much nicer result. Right, I think possibly a bit deeper here, possibly one more that side. Let me have a look. Oh yes, like that. Now, I've got to be honest, for me, you could leave it like that. I actually think that looks lovely, but I'd like to add some colour, so that's what we'll do. But like I say, if you want to keep it totally monochromatic, that will be beautiful and I might actually create another and leave it at this point because I really like that. And just thinking about it, you know, we do have to make, unfortunately, sympathy cards or, you know, cards for people who um, something not very nice has happened to them. You know, not just condolence cards, but sometimes, you know, it could be, I don't know, a separation or something traumatic in the life. Well, I think this would actually be a, a nice card to send if there is such a thing as a nice card you know what i mean it's difficult trying to spit the words out isn't it well it is for me so poppies i'm going to color them red and i've got and i'm using my fabulous pencils let me get the box because so i've got my lovely set of pencils here I just find it easy to get the colours out to start off with. And I've got a mid-red and a deep red. But for me, to make it red even deeper, I use brown. I just find it works really well. So I'm going to start off by adding my deep red at the base here, look. Where I know it's going to be darker. And again, I can do this on all three. Now, normally I have to concentrate to keep it in the spotlight, but I'm okay here because all three of them are actually in the spotlight. I mean, it's funny if you've got a, a almost a flower half in and half off because you really do have to concentrate. Otherwise, if you're not careful, you colour the whole thing in and then end up colouring the whole design in. I have done that before. And I bet there's some of you sat there nodding, going, yes, do you know what, Joe? we've done that as well. I'm just going to add a bit of brown at the base, look. And as I say, it really deepens that red. And then just go back over. Drag that colour up. 
I will be using my Wink of Stella to, to watercolour paint these, but I'd just like to get as much good result as I can with the pencils. And so these are numbers 170, 132 and 23. And then I'm going to come in with a couple of greens and I've got 22 and 27. And where these poppy heads are, look, where it's in, I'm going to add the green and the same with the stem. I've got a little bit of that there. And then on the field grass, I'm actually going to come in with this light green. Just because I want a little bit more colour. And I'm just following the lines of the stamp. And then, like I say, in with my, my Wink of Stella. Check it's clean. Yep. And I'll just go over the field grass area first which just happens to be my lighter colour. And it'll instantly blend that colour, but also add the beautiful sparkle. And now I can go over the darker green. So that's just the stems. And then clean, it's always important to clean. Right, we're clean now. Now with the poppet, I'm just gonna go in the lighter area first to blend that light red. And then when I've blended that, I can go into the mid colour look and then drag down into the dark where I've got that brown. Clean it off and just get in the habit of cleaning it. So again, the lighter area, the mid red, and then down into that dark brown and drag it along. Same with this one. And I do love this way of colouring. I was so tough when I worked out how to do it. Well, really, it was just a cheat, wasn't it? Because I hadn't time to watercolour and then add my Wink of Stella, so I just did the two together. Fabulous cheat. Now, I've got to be honest, I think for quick colouring, that's lovely, isn't it? So I'm just going to use my heat tool. Just dry it a little. But also, if you remember, what the heat tool does is it just lessens the glue on the tape as well, which is good. Now, before we take the tape off, I want to add a little bit of sparkle in there. So I'm going to pop this back, but I'm also going to put my kitchen roll here. And in fact, I'll get another piece and put it up here. And I'm going to use the yellow. As you know, I love this yellow sparkle. So we'll add a couple of little white highlights first just with white posca don't want to overcook it that's it right put that back in there now we've got some there haven't we just in case i'm just going to put my inky binky there I'm sure I'll keep it all in here, but you never know. I'm going over the poppies, over everything. Right. Lift these out of the way. And carefully lift this straight up if we can. And I'm just going to give that a wipe because the Posca, when it dries, it's permanent with it being acrylic paint. So it'll wipe off no problem, but we just don't want it to dry on there. Quick wipe and that's done. So like I say, time to take the tape off now. Check my hands are clean. Now, because I've used the heat tool, but it's the Lavinia low tack tape look. So it comes off beautiful. Just take this one off. And then you've got this lovely, lovely design. But we can just make it even a bit more better. And that's not very good English, is it? We can make it a little bit nicer. Got a little mark there. Just see if I can rub that off. I don't know where that came from. So I just want to make 
this look a little bit more 3D. That's the idea anyway. So if I come in, so if we look at the difference, can we see? So hopefully the one on the left look pings a little bit more than this one. And all we're going to do is use our lovely pastel pencils. Just going to create a little bit of space. Don't know about you, but my craft space just seems to be getting smaller and smaller. I'm going to lean on this because I really want to try and keep this nice and white. So I'm going to use the grey and the black. And I've got myself one of these biodegradable cotton buds. And just at this side, look, I'm going to come in with the grey. And then also a little bit of black here, just to deepen that. And then I'm just going to almost use my grey to almost start to blend it. And then I'll come in with my cotton bud and as I say the blending does two things it fixes it but also in my opinion it makes it look better it sort of fuzzes the edge <sighs> and I'm just going to add a little bit on this bottom edge now you don't have to you can leave the bottom edge if you like it as it is but I'm just going to come in to add a little bit more shadow I think it would just look nicer so I've used the grey right along and then under where this is, I think this would have a bit more shadow. So I'm going to come in with the black and just blend that with the grey. And then in with the, the cotton bud. And again, I'm trying to blow the little bit of pastel off. I don't want to do that because if I do that, I find it, I get it on my hands and it sort of smudges everywhere. But I like that for me, that just makes all the difference. In fact, I think that black could just go up there a little bit more. But I'm just fussing now. But I, yeah, do you know what? I think that looks, that finishes that off much better. And for me, it's worth doing that. Now, the other thing you could do, you could put glossy accents over the whole thing or your um, clear embossing powder with your um, Versamark ink first in that circle. So that would look lovely. And that would not only be a spotlight, but it would almost look like a magnifying glass, wouldn't it? That would be fabulous. Right, now, on my original, I've got Live in Harmony because I think, I always think wildflowers do they live in harmony. And you know what? That's what we should all do. I mean, you know, we're only here once. We should really, really look after each other. Right, so I'm going to add spread the love to this one because, again, wildflowers for me, they spread the seeds and they spread lots of love. And I'm just going to put that here. As I say, you could add some more. If you do have a mark on here, don't forget you could add some little more of your... You could add white Posca or the gold, the yellow or even the gold. Now, on this one, I've actually put some red card behind just to make it pop a little bit more. But it's up to you. I mean, blue poppies would look beautiful, wouldn't they? The, um, the Himalayan, the Mechanopsis. Or what about yellow? The Cambrian or the Cumbrian Welsh poppy. I mean, you might not even want to use the poppy stamp. It's going to be difficult getting these in today. But there we go. So I hope you've enjoyed that. And that sparkle, look at that sparkle. It really does show up well on those poppies, doesn't it? If I just move the light... So you can see this one is full on with the sparkle. But this is lovely because you can really see the depth of colour. So I do hope you have a go at making a card similar to this. Maybe add that clear embossing powder. I'd love to see what it looks like. Or maybe keep it all monochromatic. 
And we've got a lovely new colours of the Versafine Clairs. I bet you could have some fun with those, couldn't you? Now, if Mr Mojo's gone, there you go, you've got some homework. Maybe create one of these panel designs with a spotlight and monochromatic. There you go. Challenge, can you accept it? Anyway, as always, thanks so much for spending time with me. I hope you enjoy the rest of your week. Stay happy, stay healthy. Lots of love and hugs from me. Bye for now.